You are about to listen to a discussion that I had with George Oliver, the CEO of Johnson Controls, which is a company with over 120,000 employees that specializes in creating smart, healthy, and sustainable buildings. My conversation with George is part of the research that I did for my new book called Leading with Vulnerability. I interviewed over 100 CEOs just like George at companies around the world. I surveyed 14,000 employees to look at how do we bring vulnerability inside of our organizations, specifically to leaders. So if you want to hear from more CEOs just like George, grab a copy of the book by heading to leadwithvulnerability.com. You can also join the Substack community where we're going to be releasing all these podcasts, all these videos over the coming weeks and months. And the link to that is greatleadership.substack.com. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with George Oliver. When you hear the phrase vulnerable leader, um, what does that mean for you personally? What does that make you think of? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I mean, vulnerable leader is, is always someone that's uh, authentic and someone that's very open and, and, um, and, and, and trusting and, and uh, respected. And, and then I think because of that, I mean, everyone's got strengths and weaknesses and I think through that, people being being vulnerable is 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 obviously showing showing some of that either through um, you know your presence or through your stories or I think it's just about you know being very open and, and transparent. Would you say that you're a vulnerable leader? Or are you pretty open and transparent with your people? I would say um, you know I think as um, you know a lot of a lot of this is built over time, but you develop confidence and and courage relative to understanding that, you know, I think the strength of a leader, um, this is an, an attribute that that's the strength of a leader. And I think, um, people like to see the, the human side of, of leaders and let's face it. Um, although people have different levels of responsibility, um, we're all people. And yeah. I think the strength of a leader is, is demonstrating, I mean, certainly based on experiences, you get to where you are based on your skill set and, and your learnings. But at the end of the day, we're all people and and uh, treating everyone um, in a similar fashion, I think, is important also relative to to maintaining that strength. And so I think I think over time I've become more, you know, you look back and you you have a lot more to share. There's a lot more learnings and you make a lot more mistakes and. And then being very open about about that, I think, um, makes people real. You know, yeah. makes leaders real, and, and people can learn and and um, for themselves and understand how that might apply to to their what they do and and how they make an impact. So, I think I think it, over time, um, I think it's just continued to increase. I mean, just because you get to a point where you know you recognize that, um, especially whether you're no matter what you're doing, whatever you're leading, um, you know, you, you, you gotta be the leader and people have got to respect and trust what yeah. you do. And I think a lot of what you share and, and share who you are and what your values are and, and the like, I think, um, it makes a big impact. What about as far as creating boundaries? Because part of authenticity, right? I mean, like, for example, do you talk about your family? Do you talk about personal stuff at work? How do you balance being authentic with also having, you know, the, the, the private life? If you, if that's what you want. Uh, you know, I tend to, I think, you know, getting back to your first question, I think over time, you know, I, I tend to be fairly private and I try to keep, you know, my personal life separate from my, my business life, but you recognize that they do overlap. They do converge. And, and because, you know, what you experience from a personal standpoint really impacts who you are um, and how you lead and, 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 and impacts your values. So it's hard to separate per se. Yeah. Um, and so I think during this period of time, I think obviously the last any any time you go through a period of change like we've gone through with the pandemic and yep. then all of the events over the last two years, I think it has forced you know, leaders to be more vulnerable and, and show more empathy. And, and so as part of that, you know, as, as we've been building um, diversity within John's controls, you know, it's in, in, and after, 
in the, the um, you know the whole uh, you know movement there with with after the um, the shooting of, of the the death of George Floyd, you know the ability to be able to really get much more open and getting perspectives. You know the yeah. I think a lot of times when you're building a team, it's it's understanding you know the diversity and and the the skill sets and the and, and what everyone can bring and, and and be their best. And so we started this um, and I led it was to have perspective sessions and you have groups of employees that have similar you know backgrounds or or challenges and the like and be able to open up about it. And uh, so one of the things was you know the uh, you know we started whether I think the one I participated on was disabled you know, one around disability. And, and you know, I, I shared the story around when I grew up, my mother was very disabled with, uh, with um, you know, debilitating arthritis. And so a, a lot of that, it forced me to be very self-sufficient, you know, relative to what I did and how, you know, whether it be helping out with, you know, dinners and, and, and doing your own laundry. And, and it just was natural. And I, I told the story that I still do the same today. You know, I mean, that meaning... I still do laundry and I still do, you know, I, I chip in and do my part relative to, you know, when I'm with the family and, and cooking dinners and, and this stuff. So some of that is when you <laughs> share some of that, you know, you because it is who I am and, and, and yeah. the values that I I uh, built, you know, you do apply it in, in what you do and, and how you think about uh, like I don't mind with anything happening in the company to jump in and contribute. You know what I mean? Meaning if there's things that I can help and contribute to, I'm not, I'm not into hierarchy and I'm not into boundaries. And, and so I, I don't know, this, you know, so we started that and we did, I participated on a, on a, you know, a, it was a father's perspective session and I have two sons and I said, I'm more than willing to share my experiences, bring it up. You know, my sons are 36 and 32 and, and then, um, it was interesting. We had a couple of fathers that there were um, in biracial marriages and and then shared their stories. And I thought I had, you know, I had a good story relative to some of the challenges that I faced as a father. And then you listen to other stories and and the like, and you have much better appreciation for, yeah. you know, the diversity and, and the impact that people have and in, in, in the challenges that they face. So I, th- I think part of it is, and those are a few, you know, stories but it does, I think, um, I think for people that as you develop as a leader, I think people understanding, you know, um, who you are, how you got to where you are, the experiences you've had, I think are, are important. Hmm. I think are important. What, um, if you were to think of vulnerability on kind of a scale of one to five, what would be a five for you as far as something that makes you feel most vulnerable? Because you seem like a pretty confident person. So those few times when you are very vulnerable and you do feel emotionally exposed and you do feel uncertain and you do feel, I don't know, maybe even scared, what what would it take for you to be at a five? So that's a good question. I would say, and again, I think over time, it uh, it continues to improve. You realize that that everything you do is built on the foundation of relationships. And I think relationships are are long-term and are built on trust and respect. And so when you get into tough situations, whether, you know, I, I could go through a number of tough situations that I've had to, to lead through, the more that you can, can uh, be yourself, be open, be transparent, um, is, is what quickly builds those relationships and, and, and builds the trust. So I think <clears throat> that's most important. Um, and when you're going through, you know, transformation, a lot of change, um, the only way that you're going to be successful in driving that change is that everyone is fully on board, fully, you know, supportive, and, and ultimately building the trust that's needed to to be able to sustain uh, what it is that you're doing uh, longer term. And so I think when I, and, and some of this is not only you know, getting a sense on where you are as an individual, but then, you know, what it is that you can do as an individual that transcends, you know, a hundred thousand people. Right. right. And so the more that I, when, when in, in all of my engagements, the more that I can 
be open and transparent and and um, <clears throat> share stories and and uh, examples and the like is where people come back um, and assess that hey boy that you really you know you really made a b big impact you know so it isn't so it's I think it's those elements or those those examples <clears throat> that even though I mean you can you know you can always you know fundamentally drive change but if it's one dimension yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's then how is it, how is it received, right? Mm. How is the individual receiving that? And then what is it that inspires them to be themselves and to be able to step up and feel like they can make a bigger impact and be part of a, you know, bigger mission. And so, I mean, I think you can mechanically, you know, do a lot of things. And I think the authenticity, the, the openness, the, the vulnerability is what gets everyone on board. Yeah, you know, is what what brings people on board to to believe in themselves, to believe in the team, and and ultimately follow the leader. You know, when you look at you know any successes, t team successes or business successes, or you know that that's the environment that they create. And so I think when we're when I'm a five, I feel you can feel it. You can you can get a sense where hey, people are 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 on board they're, they're they they've opened up um there's emotion there's commitment there's uh, excitement um that would be a five you know what i mean okay. when you know, it's a one and you're obviously trying to move a mountain or try, try to you know achieve a, a big and then you you can tell you can tell whether you've been able to achieve that that commitment or or be able to inspire and get everyone understanding kind of what the, you know, what the problem is, what we're trying to solve, and then how do you, you ultimately, you know, become part of the team, be able to be your best and, and believe that you can achieve something more together than what you would achieve as an individual. Yeah. So, so it's interesting that you, know, that, you, yeah, that helpful? You, yeah, you talk about the five as a positive, because um, a lot of leaders I've interviewed when I say, what's a five for you? You know, vulnerability is that kind of like an uncomfortable feeling of uh, fear. Uh, you know, Brene Brown talks about it as fear, uncertainty, uh, you know, risk yeah. and emotional exposure. So what would well, we, if you look at it more as an individual, I would say. Yeah. What um, makes you feel most emotionally exposed and uncertain? What kind of a situation? Uh, you're, to be honest with you, when you go into a situation, and I've had lots of situations professionally where you go in and you bring a lot of depth and expertise, you bring you know, experience and, and, and the like, but it might be areas where you're now in, in an assignment that there's a lot of, there's a lot of gaps and, and, and less experience and you're taking on new challenges that you've got to be open about and, and vulnerable about that, yeah. that, you know, when you go in and, and I mean, a good example was when, when we did this merger and, and, and the plan of the merger was his merger of equals and over 18 months, I was going to ultimately take the company forward. And, and of course, when you do a merger of equals, it's never as it's planned. And so what happened, we, you know, it was a difficult merger in the first year and things were more, more challenging and there was a, a division of leadership. And then you say, okay, you know, based on, the state of the company investors get a little bit active and and then they you know want change and so then then change occurs and and then you're in the seat you know you're in the seat and then you say well am, am, you know you, you could argue am, am i part of the problem am i part of the solution right i mean i've led you know one of the companies that merged and it was my strategy to to merge and we found ourselves in a, in a difficult first year now you could argue I wasn't at that time. I had moved into the COO position, so I wasn't quote the boss, but I was one of the the key leaders. And so then you quickly have to demonstrate vulnerability that okay, we are where we are. And when you looked at what needed to get done, there was uh, whether I actually ever stated that we were in a crisis, we were in a crisis, right? And so then you have to be open about okay, we are how we got to where we are and, and then ultimately, you know, plot a path forward and how do you get people again reignited or re-excited about, you know, the future of the company and and taking on some of the challenges that were faced uh, as a result of that, you know, difficult first year. So yeah. 
and I think your success is a ability to be able to connect and get people aligned and, and, and get people again, you know, excited about the future of the company. And, and that's what we want to went about to do. And that was five years ago. That was um, yeah. back in 2017. Can you share a time when you were vulnerable with your team and what the impact of that was? Um, and any, actually any stories, cause you know, one of the people, one of the things that people love to read about and hear about the most are, uh, <laughs> stories, you know, whether they're good or bad, you know, I, I've talked to a couple CEOs who shared stories where they were vulnerable and, and it actually, uh, ended up not being a good thing. Um, so you obviously have a very seasoned and tenured career in leadership. So any stories that come to mind for you, I both good and bad? I mean, I get a lot of, I mean, there's, uh. I mean, it's, it's, you know, to what level you want to discuss it. I would say, um, you know, you take on, uh, when I say vulnerable, you know, like, uh, and this is sometimes part of the learning, but I tell these stories a lot because I was, you know, the, and maybe it was the, the the other side of being vulnerable. Maybe it was being, you know, at, at the time being more bold and vulnerable, but you become vulnerable as a result. And so the, the you know, a lot of times I've, you know, I came up under the, the Jack Welsh era in GE. And, yeah. Um, it's a very you know, non-vulnerable of, way to leave. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> and so I think you, you know, it, it was, it was the, the, the the probably the opposite where you would you know you'd be bold and do things and then I think um, it was you know you you go through some learning some sometimes good sometimes bad and so I think there was a lot of t- times I took on some big big initiatives um, and and as a result became vulnerable right I mean because you 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 go after something you believe that you can you can achieve and then as a result maybe maybe you learn something different and then you have to be mm-hmm. you know, very open and transparent that maybe things didn't go as <laughs> planned and, <clears throat> and make sure that everyone understands that, you know, the, the whole culture is okay. It's okay to make a mistake, but don't, don't repeat it. You yeah. know what I mean? And so I think, um, I think good leaders, um, number one, you, you need to be decisive. You do need to get people aligned and then obviously decide when you take the hill and sometimes when you take the hill, you got to also make sure you're transparent um, relative to whether um, taking the hill worked or not. And and so I think um, you know you become a little bit vulnerable as a result of that. Um, Any and stories you, come to mind for you, like specific uh, situations that occurred that really made well, you I feel mean, vulnerable? I mean, early career, I think some of these foundational lessons were <laughs> were like early in my career. You know, I came up through operations and. You know, just in time, lean manufacturing was um, was a big deal, and GE was um, you know there was a, a lot of work to be done, and so back in the um, it would have been back in the, the, the late '80s, early '90s when yep. you know I had my first plant manager job, and that was a big deal. I mean that you know when you become plant manager, you think that that you've made it. I mean that's a big you know big deal when you're in operations, and so then you decide, okay, I'm going to be the leader. We're going to be the best, and um, you know, it actually started with vulnerability because at the time there was a major um, aerospace downturn, and to to um, be able to position the plant, it was a, a lease plant. There was going to be certainly some downsizing across the company, across the business, and um, I was leading a very productive plant uh, up in New Hampshire, and you know because we were somewhat vulnerable because of the, the downturn and that we were a lease facility. Um, t- took it upon myself to say, listen, we're going to be the best, you know, we're going to do, we're going to embrace these, the strategy, we're going to, we're going to be the best, we're going to be lean, we're going to, we're going to be, we're going to create work cells, we're going to multi-skill, we're going to do all the things that at that time um, defined competitive manufacturing. And so we did that, um, shut the plant down and just a little bit of background, all the plants, you know, make components that ultimately go into multiple engines when you're in that business, you know, multiple engine lines. So when you shut down a plant, you're in essence, you know, you're shutting down engine lines. So you have to plan ahead. And we did that and said, we're going to be shut down for, you know, uh, two weeks uh, to do this. Um, and we did it. 
and then we're shut down well more than two weeks, right? So then you you say, okay, the vulnerability of being potentially, you know, um, downsized to um, then now the vulnerability that um, the boss didn't, you know, the decision that was made maybe is being second guessed, um, you know, made us even more vulnerable, you know? So, yeah. so leader, <laughs> leaders of the business at the time came to visit. It's one of those visits that, you know, this isn't going to go well. It's not going to go well. And and what the heck's happening and who the hell's running this plant and and, and the like. And then you definitely felt very, very vulnerable. And it was one of these things where uh, still my confidence came through. And I said, I told, told my boss at the time to say, you know what, I, I know why you're here. You're obviously assessing, you know, my leadership and my decision making. And I, I would just tell you again that I do it again. I would do it again. That we do, we the learnings here is going to be fundamental to the success of the business, you know, for a long time to come. And so, okay, yes, there's been a short term impact, I understand, and, and I'm accountable to that. But you know what? I would uh, I would do it again. And so he looked at me, he said, You're 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 serious. I said, I'm I'm dead serious. Mm-hmm. And so I uh, didn't get fired and um uh, you know the plant um today um I'm an icon at the plant, you know, so the plant has gone through multiple, you know, anniversaries and there's still people working in the plant. And um, I've, I've met a number of plant managers over the decades that have run the plant. And when they meet me, they say, oh, my God, George Oliver, you're a legend. You you are a legend. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so I mean, you, you know, you go through experiences like that. And I tell some, sometimes I tell that story and people are fascinated. And I say, yeah, I didn't get fired. I actually get promoted. Well, it's interesting because it also sounds like you could have easily passed the the blame and said, oh, you know what happened because our team didn't get things done on time or this happened. But you it sounds like you took the accountability yourself. Well, this is I mean, let's go back to your first question about, you know, uh, uh, you know, accountability and ownership is 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 being, you know, you got to be authentic. You got to have accountability, ownership. Um, And at times, you know, that does make you vulnerable. Right. I mean, because. You know, it opens up maybe weakness and maybe mistakes, maybe bad decision making. But at the end of the day, um, and underlying all of this discussion is 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 integrity. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've got to be you've got to be who you are, no matter who you're you know you're interfacing with, and tell it straight. Um, because I think at the end of the day, you know, people get become vulnerable and then they, you know, maybe not that they lack integrity, but maybe not fully transparent yeah, and yeah. get pressured into, to, um, making excuses or and the like. And so I, I think that's important and you got to always, every step of the way, you, you got to be accountable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's the difference between just vulnerability versus being a vulnerable leader. Uh, you know, some people I feel like try to use vulnerability as an excuse. Like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that messed up. Like, you know, I made a mistake, but there's no accountability of like, here's what I'm going to do to fix it. Here's what I've learned, um, which I think is an important piece. Um, so you- yeah, you know, the other one I, I would say, like when COVID happened, I think that was very, you know, emotional and very, very vulnerable yeah. because at that time there was so much that was undefined, um, you know, with what what was happening and how it was going to play out. And, and then, um, you know, you immediately get this incredible focus on health and safety. And we're a company that actually drives health and safety um, yep. in a significant way across buildings. And so it was, um, it was very emotional. I mean, I, I have to uh, admit uh, during those early days and in the, the leadership meetings or calls that we had and, and the like, um, you know, you know, forced everyone to, you know, to, to be much more vulnerable relative to their own emotions and their own, you know, and, and how they were dealing with it and, and, and the like. And I think that set, set the stage for, you know, during that period of time for, for the team, you know, being able to, to cope and be able to, you know, work through, you know, the challenges at the same time while we're trying to maintain, you know, some stability and, and focus on our customers and continuing to deliver deliver on, you know, the support of critical infrastructure. And so, I think that was uh, an interesting period of time. It kind of test you know tested leaders in a in a big way um, yeah. when you go through that amount of change and 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 how significant that was. 
You mentioned emotion, uh, which is interesting. Have you ever cried at work? So I, I've, uh, I wouldn't say I've cried. I, I've, I've definitely have, have, um, you know, um, uh, what do you, you know, filled up or, you know, be, become very emotional or, or filled up, but I've never, I wouldn't say outright cried. Yeah. Um, no. so speaking of vulnerability, you, you mentioned you, uh, kind of came up during the Jack Welsh era, which is a very non-vulnerable time. In fact, at that time, uh, you know, I, I don't even think that authenticity, asking for help, admitting a mistake, like none of that, I don't think it was allowed or encouraged or talked about. I mean, if you were to think back earlier in your career, would you say that's a pretty fair assumption? Was vulnerability not talked about? It wasn't encouraged like do you have or do you remember some of your leaders at the time who just came to you and said you know no emotion you got to have the right answer you know the interesting you know because uh, you know I'm, i'll give you a, a counterpoint to that I, I think at the end of the day um the the focus on on people and development and and relationships and 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 respect and, and trust it was that was core I, at the time and mm -hmm. You know, having the opportunity to engage with, um, you know, Jack frequently one on one, he was very, he was very authentic, and and you could be, you know, you could be vulnerable. I mean, when when I decided um, when I decided to, you know, to leave GE and, and without going into all the details there, um, it was um, the most vulnerable discussion and interaction with Jack and I, um, and most fulfilling that I ever had around me as a person, about me as a leader, about, um, you know, the impact that I had at GE and, and then, uh, the ability for, to take that to a whole new heights, um, you know, longer term. So, so I know it gets, you know, that period of time, maybe it was just, you know, overall business, but the underlying fundamentals aren't everything that you read. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, so it's interesting. I was wondering if you can share a little bit more about that because very few, actually maybe one or two other CEOs I've interviewed uh, have worked um, directly with Jack Welsh, but he is not, you know, when you think of a vulnerable leader, he is not the CEO that a lot of people think of. Authentic for sure, but not vulnerable. Um, you know, he's very much, very emotional kind of guy, very, uh, authentic from that regard, but most people don't see him as somebody who opened up and let people in and, you know, talking about failures and mistakes. It sounds like you had a very, um, impactful conversation with him. Can you share a little bit more about, you know, what, uh, yeah, what I mean, left I, such an impression? I don't want to get on that path. I mean, it's, it's because I think everyone's got di different opinions and have different personal experiences. Yeah, I would just yeah. Say he was very, he was very people focused. He yeah. would, he had this ability to, to, um, you know, to, to touch people, to engage, to, to, um, learn, to, you could make mistakes. It was, it was okay. I mean, obviously you, you, you gotta, you know, you gotta learn from the mistakes and, and, and not to have the mistakes happen again. But, um, that element of it, um, was for, as a, from a leader, whether he demonstrated vulnerability or not, you could debate, but as far as the engagement and the learnings and the, and the, and the, the leadership, um, I mean, it certainly was, yeah. was very impactful in my development. And I was, you know, I was there 20, I mean, it would have been 20, 20 years with him leading the company. And then shortly after that, I ended up leaving, but. He's a very, you know. Yeah. I mean, and he, he helped you kind of understand the impact and he helped guide your future direction, it sounds like? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, just he's, you know, was, was always very supportive and, and I achieved, you know, uh, a lot of growth within GE and got, you know, obviously every this step of the way of being able to, to develop and learn and, and then get, you know, obviously bigger jobs to, to make a bigger impact in the company and the like. And, and that continued. And yeah. then, you know, as I, when I left GE and, and, you know, the, um, you know, the continued, uh, you know, not infrequent, it wasn't frequent, um, engagements very, very similar. 
Would you say that assumption is pretty fair that early on in your career, uh, that vulnerability wasn't maybe, I don't know, as mainstream as talked about as accepted, uh, versus now it seems like everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Whether it was accepted or not, I'm not quite sure it was, um, you know, I think, you know, business in, in general, when you look at, at, uh, you know, what was expected, how people worked, um, how they engaged, um, maybe the, the separation of, of, of personal with, with work, it was very different, yeah. right? I mean, it was very different then. So I think that in itself, just the pure, I mean, you didn't have the internet and the way that people engage and, 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 and the like. So I think for all of those reasons, yeah, I mean, I think it was kind of a little bit more separation. I think in today's environment, everything is blurred, right? Yeah. Relative to whether working from home or you're doing, um, you know, and, and just the amount of communication and, and the exposure. Um, and so I, I just think that in itself just makes people more vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, so in the book, one of the things that I talk about is that there are a couple of ways that I think leaders become vulnerable. One, you know, they're just raised that way, you know, with their, their parents, the environments in which they grew up. Uh, another one is some sort of an event or situation happens that makes them be vulnerable. Like one CEO I interviewed told me he was the CEO of an airline company. Uh, and he said he was very command and control, very, you know, hierarchy. And then one day he gets a call at three in the morning that one of his planes crashed and a hundred or no, 230 people died. Uh, and he said that transformed him and made him a vulnerable leader. Yeah. Um, and I think a third way that leaders become vulnerable is they, they learn it. So, you know, they've worked with coaches, they've gotten feedback from people. Somebody has told them, Hey, you got to open up and be a human being. When you think about yourself, um, would you say you fall into one of those three? Like what has forced you to try to become a more a vulnerable leader over the years? So what, what was the first one again? I get the second, the third. The first one was what? First one is just how you were raised. So some leaders told me, you know, they were the way that their parents brought them up was to be vulnerable and show emotion. Uh, second one was an, exp an event, like something happens. And a third is just learning over time through feedback, through either coaching, through something like that. So I think, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's any one of those. I would say, you know, obviously I, I got brought up with strong values and, and obviously being able to, um, you know, I had two great leaders. My mother and father were both, um, you know, really um, high quality individuals and kind of blue, blue collar and worked their way up and, and uh, you know, treated everyone with respect and, and the way that they engaged. Um, obviously the way that they raised the family, you know, uh, all of that. So I think that's was underpinning. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a combination know. for you of a few of those. If you want to get access to the second part of this conversation, remember to head over to greatleadership.substack.com. We're putting the first half of these conversations on all these different platforms like YouTube, Apple, Spotify, etc. But to get access to the second part of these conversations, you need to go to greatleadership.substack.com. Enter your email over there and we're going to be releasing a lot of these really amazing and candid discussions over the coming weeks and months as we head over to the book launch, which is October 3rd. And remember, you can also pre-order a copy, which I hope you do, at leadwithvulnerability.com. Again, I interviewed 100 CEOs, surveyed 14,000 employees, and the whole premise of the book is looking at how leaders can approach vulnerability in the right way. So I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I'll see you next time.